share with the public what you're going through? My name is Edwin. Okay. And I have ADHD. Okay. Uh, severe ADHD. I have anxiety. What is ADHD? ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. Okay. Mm. I have always had it as a child, but I didn't know. It was diagnosed in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and the anxiety is part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, when things are very tough for me, I get very anxious. Okay. Uh, I also had, uh, at one point, I had depression. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, it is, it is being handled, so I can say I'm okay. But the ADHD is always present, so always present. that is, that is the, the challenge. Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, I've been I've been doing okay for some time now. I see. Yeah. You said you've had how long did you say you started noticing the signs? Actually, I didn't know. Uh, I was in treatment for some other uh, condition, mm -hmm. and uh, that was ADHD was an underlying issue that mm -hmm. was actually manifested itself in something totally different. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. James, I'd like to ask, uh, he said that he actually didn't know. He was going to check something else out and they found out that ADHD was actually an mm. underlying issue. Mm. How often does this happen and how can we, I guess, see signs in our children? Unfortunately, in our society today, yes. uh, mental health is something that we do not discuss as often as we should. Uh, mental health is something that's frowned on mm. and upon. Mm -hmm. And uh, mostly, especially with the condition, the particular condition that he mentions, uh, when the manifestations come, society thinks this is just a mysterious child, this is uh -huh. just being naughty, this is just being... So we attach all other labels except the particular condition. Right. Yeah. Right. So until these other manifestations lead you to a mental health practitioner, or mm -hmm. professional mm -hmm. who is able now to pick the symptoms and uh, inform that this is what we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. We might never know. Very, very many wow. people have issues that they can't attach a name to. Right. And they can't get help because they do not know that they exist in the first place. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And um, since there's so much stigma on mental health, mm -hmm. I'd like to ask Edwin uh, if you've ever undergone any negative. I don't know, I guess, uh, behavior from other people who don't understand what you're going through? Mm, I'm very vocal about it. Okay, then. And especially after I learned about the, the condition. Yes. And you're uh, also an advocate for mental health. Yes, I, I do that. Yeah. So uh, that comes with, uh, with a lot of stigma at times from friends, uh, family, mm -hmm. uh, workplace. Mm -hmm. And I, I know uh, we. We talk with James um, uh, on and off, and at times I've called him when I've told him that uh, somebody has stigmatized me or certain people are stigmatizing me in different sectors. Right. And it's usually very hard for me to even cope right. with life. But now I also have a very strong support system. Mm -hmm. But stigma is it's, it's crazy. I can say it's just crazy. Yes, it, it puts you down. And its aim is to just uh, minimize you and uh, you know put you down into a level that uh, strip you down of your dignity, you know, to an extent that you wouldn't uh, if you if you don't have a good support system, uh, you can find uh, that's where you find maybe some people even taking their own lives. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, for me, I face stigma, but the positive side of it is I have a strong support system. I know where to go when things are thick. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, you brought up the issue of suicide. I'd like to go back to James and ask. Recently, we've been seeing in the papers all over the, uh, all over. Mm. I think in every single channel, every single newspaper, at least there's one story about suicide. Mm. Outer Kosa. And I think it's just on Saturday there was a young boy, who killed, an ad adolescent, who killed himself, and no one knows why he didn't leave a note. There was no explanation whatsoever. But when it gets to that point that someone takes their lives, that means that there's, there's something they're going through and maybe they can't verbalize it. And maybe they can't find support system. How, how can people get this assistance rather than taking their own lives? We'd like to give people a chance. The issue of 
the issue of suicide in, again in the African context has been a, a very contentious issue. People don't talk about it. Right. We are recently seeing, yes, uh, all these cases. But we believe that uh, deep, deep in the rural areas, people still try to cover these suicides. Yeah. Yeah. People believe it's witchcraft, people believe it's demonic, people believe it's all these other connotations. Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, very many mental illnesses can bring about suicide. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the, the, the sad thing for us in the field is that uh, most of these suicides are preventable. Yes. If only people sought help. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a condition like depression, uh, which people are usually told just snap out of it, yeah. is, a, is, a, is a disease. Body, just the same way you'd thing. get malaria, yeah. it's the same way you get uh, depression. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the way out of depression is to see a psychiatrist, is to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. When you start feeling lethargic, you, you do not have appetite, you're sleeping too much or too little, uh, you're feeling helpless, you're feeling worthless, you're feeling your day is just dull. Yeah. There's something wrong. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I want to, to, to put it across that uh, most people who commit suicide do not do it to punish people. In fact, it's the opposite. They mm -hmm. do it because they care too much about other people, yeah. and they are thinking they have become a burden. Yeah, it's true. And they think by them exiting the world, mm -hmm. they give their loved ones an easier time. Wow. So while we classify them as selfish and, and inconsiderate, for them, because it is an, uh, it's a mental disorder, for them it's the other way around. They are helping their loved ones. Yeah. Right. But uh, again, Swiss, uh, depression and, and other mental illnesses that uh, culminate in, in suicide and suicide attempts can be treated. There are some that just talk therapy, psychotherapy will be able to sort. There are some that uh, have to be put on medication. Uh, yeah, but there is, there is help out there. There is help out there. There is help and it is not a sign of weakness, because again, that's one of the biggest of the, the major issues that we are fa uh, facing. Right. People feel that, that uh, if, if I talk and mm -hmm. tell the world that I can't be, if I'm feeling worthless or I'm feeling helpless, people might consider me weak. Right. It's not a sign of weakness. Right. Yeah. Yes. What Edu is talking about, the, the stigma, again, in as much as the stigma, I do not want to blame society too much. It's a lack of understanding. They don't know. Yeah? And that which we do not know, man will usually attach some label to it. So it's not necessarily that uh, society is out to harm us, society is out to, to crush you. It is just that they do not know. And the more that we talk about these things, the, the more awareness we create and the easier it becomes on everyone. Yeah. I'm glad you have brought up the issue of awareness because that's exactly what we're trying to do, especially, and I keep stressing this is a platform for the youth, and we are, s we are all about the youth, and we'd like to help them in every single way that we can. We can't forget mental health as well, and that's why we're using this platform to talk about this. Edwin, I'd like to ask, um, when it comes to managing what you're going through, how did it affect things like marriage, things like your career? and education if you're furthering your education and even relationships with friends? Mm. Previously, uh, before uh, I sought help, uh, I didn't understand. But I never completed school. Uh, I was always doing something. I do something and leave it halfway. But when I'm starting, I have so much energy. Uh, when it comes to relationships, Everybody is a means to an end. Mm. So I, I really, I really don't attach. I, I, I never used to attach anything to a relationship. I'm just there because I'm supposed to be there. 15 minutes, I'm done. Or one few few months, I'm done. I don't want, you know. And when it comes to um, other issues, I take them. I used to take them so lightly. And I used to get you get you get bored easily, 
and there is a lot of I'm very energetic, very hyper, <laughs> very hyper. I'm like very a yeah, I'm like a two piece. year old. <laughs> I'm everywhere. That's everywhere. Yes, I'm always everywhere, everywhere. You're not exaggerating. I'm not. Oh, yeah, he, that's what ADHD is about. He he has seen me. He has seen me without medication, so he knows. Uh, so at times uh, the the condition for me because mine is rated severe. Without medication, driving is an issue. I will be cruising at a hundred, and I will forget that I'm driving and I'm distracted by something else outside. So medication helps. And as you heard, uh, talk therapy. Yes. So I have a system, a support system, where I have medication and I have uh, counselors, psychiatrists on, on my speed dial. And my family was also taken through uh, uh, some form of psychoeducation so that they can understand that these are condition. Because uh, if unchecked, when combined with other uh, uh, life uh, circumstances and events, I can also develop uh, a condition called bipolar. So I have, I have to be very careful. I have to be on point every moment. So I read about ADHD, I talk about ADHD, and everywhere I go, I say I have ADHD. You don't hide it. I don't hide it. I love so uh, I, I was recently having a conversation with some people somewhere, and we were talking about suicide and people made fun of it not knowing that in 2011 I was very suicidal you know and I tried to talk to them but as he's saying they were coming from a point of from a, from a place of ignorance so if I try to explain my ADHD to them my friend they will be <laughs> they will say I'm a kid yeah. they will say I'm, I'm mischievous mm. and for me my mind uh, if uh, if uh, he would explain it, my mind is like a fast car. I have like 10, 15 thoughts at the same time. Right. So, and at times when things are, things are thick, it's, it's very stressful. Okay. So medication helps, mm -hmm. exercise helps. So if, if, you, if you go to my car right now in the boot, there's a skipping rope. Okay. So I, I get my mind off things by exercising, right. you know? Uh, because if I don't take care of my mental health, by first accepting who I am, the conditions that I have, and asking for help when I need it, I'm going to be in a very, very dark place. Mm -hmm. And all these, uh, a, la a large percentage of people with ADHD, uh, especially severe ADHD, they're also prone to depression. So I'm walking a tightrope. If I fail to take my medication, there's a time I, I, I didn't have my medication and I was just breezing around. And my wife called these guys, uh, called Moas actually, and I was telling Moas something is wrong with my husband, okay. and he's going down a slippery slope. And after I got medication and I went to the doctor and we had a chat, I, I didn't want to admit I didn't have medication. <laughs> but even them looking at me like this, they just knew Edwin, Edwin is not on medication, something is off. Probably just to, to jump in on, on what you say, because again, not very many people will wake up one day and walk to a doctor, yeah. to a psychiatrist. Yeah. The people who we see usually have gone through a disorder for quite a while, and it's other symptoms that lead them to us, yeah? Especially now that we are talking about the youth. Most, most youth and young adults and teenagers We'll try to do what we call self-medicate by use of uh, alcohol and substances. Yeah, so you'll find that uh, somebody is excessively above limit taking whatever substance they take. Mm -hmm. They're not doing this, and, and there is a distinct difference between this particular person and their friends who are also taking. So you're always the last one to leave the bar. You're always the first one to come. So at two, you are seated at the bar stool you're always carrying a joint of weed or something, yeah? That's a cry for help. Yeah. While most people might again attach, he's just a spoiled kid, he's just not serious with life, he's yeah. all those other uh, labels right. that mtotombaya, meribiwa na wazazi, 
all those labels that we attach, it might be a cry for help and these, these are the telltale signs that uh, we might want to see a doctor. Yeah? Because again, left unchecked, they, it will become an addiction, which again on its own is a mental disorder. And uh, you might end up either in treatment or dead. You know, I'm glad you brought up addiction because I think we'll discuss that next week mm. um, so that we can tie in. Because mm. you've said addiction is also a mental condition. It is. it is. And I think a lot of people don't know that. Mm. And in Kenya, we have a lot of addicts. However, I feel that we should cover this as well next week. Um, I didn't know it was a... And I feel like many people didn't know it's a mental condition. They just feel like someone is just... I'm a penda kukunyo. Yeah, <laughs> mlevi too. Like, I'm a kuacha. Yes, ataki kuacha. Mm. So we shall cover that next week. Mm. I'd like to ask you um, if there's someone who is watching, maybe who feels like they need to talk to a psychiatrist or a parent who is watching and it's like they have noticed a few things in their child is amiss. Mm. How can they approach their child? What can they say? And because because most of the time our parents can see these things, they can see. Um, it's true, yes. But but now that we have discussed and said, hey, it's a cry for help. Now, how do they approach that child? And also the same way, how I'll I'll leave you to say that one. And we'll, I would like for you to explain how maybe the child can approach a parent for support. Please go ahead. It depends on what what is the definition of a child, because I believe that if you're still if a person is still under the care of the parents yeah. and uh, their dependents, then the parent should play the parent role. Mm -hmm. If things are not right, a parent should be able to tell the son or the daughter that I honestly think mm -hmm. there is something amiss. Okay. Can we see a doctor? Can we see? Can we talk to someone? Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's it's a bit scary. So it's a bit scary, scary because also black people don't talk to psychologists. Psychologists, psychiatrists, that is the Mzungu disease. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. But again, uh, the reality on the ground is we are where we are. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. And the sad thing is if we do not act, circumstances will force us to act. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And for mental illnesses, it's been proven that the earlier they are diagnosed and started on treatment, the better the outcome, mm. yeah. Again, there is that fear and stigma that uh, I might be on medication for forever, for yeah. life, yeah. which is not necessarily true, mm. yeah. If you work with a psychiatrist and a psychologist or a counselor, there are some mental illnesses that do not require any medication at all. You just need to find out what is the source, what's the root cause. And if the root cause is sorted, then the mental illness goes. Right. There are some that might require mild medication. There might there are some that might require prolonged medication. Yeah. Of course. But the earlier we start talking about this, the better. The earlier the parent plays the parent's role. Yeah. Because again, as a parent, you should initiate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The child might not want it. The child might rebel. But again, that's why you're the parent. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's just a matter of. Again, not forcing, but trying to make this person understand why we are doing what we are doing. Okay. If grades are failing, yes. if the, the child... And, and now that you bring it just briefly, yes. there, is, there is a very thin line, and, and parents have trouble here, distinguishing between normal teenage and adolescent rebellion mm -hmm. and mental illness. Because again, those signs mimic each other. There is ah, isolation. Uh -huh. Yeah, there is a disrespect to authority. There is a experimenting, a lot of experimenting with substances. Mm -hmm. When the child, so a child is going through adolescent and early teenage, they are forming what we call identity. They yes. in the identity formation stage. Yeah. Yes. So that's when they want to experiment with everything. They want to, but the problem is those are the same exact symptoms of the onset of a mental illness. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we usually say, if you suspect something is wrong, take action. You'd take rather action. see a counselor or a psychiatrist and you're told there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. than assume that everything is okay only to discover later that I wish I'd taken action then. Okay. Yeah. I see. Mm. 
And uh, Edwin, when it comes to children who feel um, that they are going through something, maybe my energy is too much or I don't have any energy at all. My heka, I don't even feel like going to school. I don't want to bathe because I think those are also signs of depression or something. Um, how can someone who is young, an adolescent, go and ask for assistance in that area? Mm, first, I want to say that uh, for anybody who is out there, it is okay not to be okay. It's okay. Please repeat that. It is okay not to be okay. Right. There is no harm in that. Okay. And for you to understand that it is okay not to be okay, you have to be self-aware. Mm. What makes you tick? Because the minute you realize you are self-aware, you will realize that today I'm a bit lethargic. Mm. Today I'm a bit too hyper. And maybe it has been consistent for a month. Now you need to talk to someone. Someone you can trust. Talk to your parent. Yes. Okay? Yes. Talk to someone you trust. Yes. And the person whom you're talking to now should take it up further because this is a child. And we are we are assuming maybe somebody who is maybe a teenager. Yeah. And there's a lot of information out there yeah. for both uh, parents and young people. So if I'm a young person, for example, and I feel something is off, and I come to you or I come to him as a parent, he should take it up from there. Because for me as a young person, there's only so much I can do. But that little that I'm doing is plays a very uh, integral part in determining what action to be taken. Right. So being self-aware and being able to talk. Uh, this mentality, especially for men that mm. it, it needs to go. It needs to go. It needs to go. Yes. So especially for the young men out there, talk to someone, yes. someone you trust. Go to your mom, go to your dad, go to a person in society who is going to listen to you and who can take the next step. Right. Because the minute you talk it out with somebody who can help you, it becomes easier. It becomes easier. I, I have had ADHD for a very long time. I have been aware of ADHD since uh, 2015. Mm. Uh, basically about three years, mm -hmm. heading on to four. And I know when I'm feeling off. I know when I'm feeling hyper. I know when I'm feeling, because at times when I get so angry, I, I become s somebody totally different. Wow. And I know that maybe it's because I skipped some medication some time back. You know, I know maybe it's because somebody has said something. But that self-awareness and being able to stay in check has come through practice and accepting yourself. Because it's not a, actually, most people in, in who are doing great things find they have some disorder somewhere. I hear, I've heard that as yeah. well, that most people who yes. have extremely good talent yeah. is a people, disorder. People with ADHD, like for me, right. I, I think outside the box. Right. And some things just come from top of my head. Okay. And interestingly, uh, I was very surprised when these guys did some tests some time back and they found that apart from being a uh, loss of concentration and such things have an extremely high IQ. You're a very intelligent man. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It surprises You're me. You're actually a very intelligent man. Surprises me also. Yeah. So talk. Mm. It is okay not to be okay and it is okay to talk. Actually it is time to talk mm. for young people. It right. is time to talk. Right. Share those deep right. feelings with somebody you trust. Mm. There, is, there is help. There is help. There is help. Now um, lastly I'd like to ask something to do with genetics maybe and we'll go to you after I ask his expertise opinion because I hear that sometimes mental health can be passed down and this scares people who have mental health because then it's like that basically means maybe I shouldn't I am child. doomed my yeah. children are doomed my children are doomed <laughs> because it's a difficult thing to manage you know if you yourself have gone through it then even you you get scheduled like I do not want my children to go through what I've gone through therefore I shall not have kids I don't know why you say it's difficult to manage because actually it's not uh -huh. again I have had Edwin I think about three or four times talk about acceptance because it's just about acceptance that yeah. I have ADHD. Yeah. 
Yes. That is the first step. Yes. Then what next? Mm -hmm. Then you now put in the systems that help you to to manage. So it's not as as difficult as as most people would would assume. Yeah? But it's why true. why do they shy away then from having children? No, it's it's true. Mm -hmm. Let's start from where you you ask. It's true that. Uh, most of these mental illnesses are genetically passed on. Yes. In fact, we say it's, it's a genetic predisposition, mm. just like any other thing. Albinism, for example. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. You, can, uh, you can have the gene, but it's a recessive gene. Right. Yeah. So it is not dominant. It's, it's, not, it's, dominant. it's not prevalent. It's not showing. Yeah. Same with mental health. You can have a gene, but it has not been triggered. And that's why we are saying we need to talk a lot about these things. Mm. Because, for example, if you have an, an ADHD... Hold on, please repeat that. You can have a gene, but it has not been triggered. Triggered. So it's possible that you could be having something, but... And you're perfectly but okay. You do not need medication. You yes. do not need anything. You do not need talk therapy. Yes. Yeah. It is life situations that at times might trigger. Yes. Self-awareness, what it talks about, is yeah. key. Yeah. Because, and I usually, the people I see, the patients who I see, I usually tell them it's very important that you psychoeducate your children that in our family we are predisposed to this thing. Yeah. As early as possible using a language they can understand. You sit them down, understand. you say, in our family we have depression. It's not even, do not sit down, do not make it formal, do not make it a thing. Right, okay. Yeah. It is life, it is just the way you would tell wow. your child. You need to study hard because so that you can get a job. You don't need to sit down to do that. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. do you? No, no, you don't. Uh, but I love how you how it, it, simple it, it you're life. making it. It is life. When yeah. you're walking with your son, talk to him. Tell him, by the way, we have there's this condition that's called depression. Your old man had it. Your grandfather had it. Uh, with this, how we deal with it, we see people. We take medications. We, the child is not has not developed depression yet. Mm -hmm. But in his mind, he's already s knowing that if I start seeing these signs, maybe it's time to talk to someone. That child, when they get to 15 to 17 and they start feeling lethargic, they will remember my dad talked to me about no. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And that's the way we cut stigma. So it's not a life and death situation. It's not, do not shy away from getting kids because you <laughs> pass to them this monster that we don't know how to deal with. Yeah. Again, there is health, there is a lot of expertise in this country, there is a lot yes. of good medication. It's yes. just that we are too afraid. Yeah? We are too afraid and locking ourselves in the house and thinking of all the gloomy and doom and the end of the world because the word depression has been mentioned. But I can tell you for a fact, very many people have depression, but you would never know. Wow. Because they are taking care of it. Mm. The problem, and I've had him allude to it, when we do not talk about it, it only morphs into something bigger and mm. morphs and morphs. Mm. And by the time now we are discovering it, it's a condition that needs a lot of treatment. Mm. The earlier we talk about it, the earlier it's diagnosed, the earlier we get treatment for it, mm. the easier, the better outcome. The easier, the better yeah. outcome. So it's not this big animal that we need to be scared of. Okay. Yes. All right. That's the expertise opinion. Mm. Bori, your family man, is that right? Yes. What, <sighs> let me ask you, have some of these thoughts passed in your head before? Have you ever worried for your child? Um, let me put it plainly. If my daughter, for, for any reason, develops ADHD, she will be in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the dad that's has true. ADHD yeah. and has battled other bigger things, mm -hmm. so she's going to be in good hands. Yeah. And just like Mwas is saying here, James is saying here, start talking to them early. And don't make it seem like it's the end of the world. So for me, I have so much, I have so much information on ADHD. Not because I'm a professional, because I've gone through it, I'm going through it, and I've accepted that they, there might be a genetic predisposition factor to it. Mm -hmm. So my child, now I have one, a daughter, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, she might, she might have that. She might get it. Right. But people function. I function. I have beaten so much in my life to be where I am right now. You have, you have. And I am proud of myself. I you don't need, be. I don't need somebody to tell me I am proud of you. 
<laughs> I am proud of myself. Mm -hmm. And that is what I intend to pass to, down to my daughter. That's amazing. And having a support system that understands the same condition also plays a part because when I'm not around, my wife knows about ADHD, she knows about uh, how it can be passed down to a family, so she has information. She can always uh, share with, with, her, with her children. So uh, I can't say that I'm afraid for her. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that somebody in that family understands it. I'm even much more comfortable that somebody in that family is going through it. Right. So we are sorted. And it's not a must. It's and not it's, a must. Yeah, it's, it's not, not guaranteed that just because you have ADHD, depression, bipolar, your children will have it. Oh, it's, it's not a must. It's not a must, mm. yeah. It's just a chance. There is a chance. There's a chance. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned something important about triggers as we uh, culminate. You know, triggers is something I wish people would understand. Because you pointed out and said that anyone could be having a mental illness, mm. depression, ADHD, schizophrenia, you name it. Mm. But it's recessive. It's not dormant. It hasn't been, how can I say, Mm. There's nothing that has... Chokozo. Yes. <laughs> because at some point, that's what a trigger is. Mm. The thing that wakes it up now. Mm. And sometimes it's the circumstances in life. Mm. And that person probably is just having a smooth life. Mm. And everything's going pretty well for them. But once the storms start to hit, mm. something happens, they change, they become, maybe they get depression. And people are like, this is not the same person I knew. Why did you, where did you even get depression from, mm. you know? Mm. Please explain triggers and how they work. No, that's a debate we can have for three days continuous <laughs> on triggers again because uh, there as many there as many triggers as there are people. Wow. Yeah. Okay. What might trigger you might not trigger me. Right. That is number one. Number two. Especially on issues trigger. You might have gone through an emotional trauma when you are a child and it was stored in your unconscious brain, mm -hmm. and it never affects you. But it does not mean you dealt with it. Right. Yeah? Yes. The minute you face any circumstance or situation that mimics what you faced then, it might trigger that. Yeah? Remember, most of the disorders that we are talking about today, the depression, the bipolar, they are mood disorders. Mood disorders are more emotional than cognitive disorders. They are disorders wow. to do with your emotions. Disorders you're being happy, with your with your, you're being sad with your, okay. yeah? So they are mood disorders. And growing up, when you're going through the developmental stages, there are million and one things that you pick and store that you might never use, you might never know. And that's the reason why we're saying it's time we started trusting counselors. It's time we started trusting therapists and psychiatrists. Because like you're saying, you'll be walking around and everything is okay. You're doing school well, you've, you're getting a job, you're dating, everything seems fine. And then one small thing and everything goes haywire. Yeah. And everybody is wondering, she has it all. In fact, that's what we say. Why is she depressed? She has a good family, she has a good job, she has a good car, she has a good... But it's your moods and your emotions that are playing havoc. Yeah. yeah. So on issues trigger, there are a million and one triggers. And that's why you need a therapist to sit with you mm. and go back with you on your life situations. What okay. happened when? As far back as probably when you're three years. Can you remember where you are when you are three wow. years? They go that far. As far back as that. Because again, in one of the developmental theories, they say we learn trust versus mis mistrust at age three. Wow, yeah. trust versus, versus mistrust, mistrust at the age of three. At age of three. Okay. If, the right, if you get the right caregiver and everything is good, you're being provided for, you learn to trust people. And the reverse, if you do not, if you have a bad house girl who is coming and going and you develop not to trust people. Mm. And then you become an adult and you are seeing these men who can't settle down with one woman, who are very insecure, they can't trust their girlfriend or their boyfriend, and we are wondering what's the problem. Mm. Probably they picked it at age three. Uh -huh. Yeah? 
yeah. and they grew up with it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So triggers are a million and one. Okay. You need to sit down with a therapist and go through why, what are you going through and why. And if you go back, the therapist is able to pinpoint. To, 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 not to help you pinpoint. Again, the therapist does not have the answers. Okay. You have the answers. The therapist just okay. helps you walk that journey together. Uh, yeah. The therapist does not have the answers. No, I'm the one no, that no. has the answers. It's yes. a therapist's job to walk the journey with me. Walk the journey with you. Okay. Try and probe, ask the right questions yes. to help you figure out what is happening. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that this can be managed. Edwin, looking at you sitting here and an open advocate for mental health, You've done a lot. You've done a lot of talks and speeches. You've um, spoken to a lot of people about this uh, ADHD. So what I can ask you, I hope it's not too personal. What, uh, what triggers you if it's not too personal? Um, what triggers me to talk or what? Uh, what triggers the ADHD to manifest besides the lack of medication? Mm. Uh, one of my triggers, just one, eh, is. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> uh, one of my triggers is family issues. Family issues? Yes. Okay. And currently they are handled, but they are there, but they are family issues. And some of these things you just have to accept and deal with them as they come. But because uh, I'm saying this because uh, one, he, he has seen me, he has seen me at my lowest, at my lowest, at my worst. Wow. So when, when I say that, I know he understands. Right. And that's, that's the much I can say. Maybe just to come in again, uh, because I know where he's coming from. Some of our triggers are things that we wish we could change, but we can't. Yeah. Mm. Some of our triggers are things that we wish we had solutions to, yeah. but we don't. Yeah. And that's where again is coming in with acceptance. But just because you've come to acceptance does not mean that you have you are comfortable with the situation. Yeah. And and, and when it comes to our personal lives and family, it's a very touchy issue. Because we always we always wish that it played out one way or the other. And we are always trying to change for the better. I usually tell people it's, it's important that we understand that uh, we have very little control of situations outside ourselves. You can control you and your how you feel and how you react, and, but you can't control the way somebody else reacts. Yeah. And that's sure. where most of us get stuck because we think we are doing good then the next party should also do good. That is the, that is the best outcome, but mm -hmm. life does not always hand you the it best outcome. It doesn't outcomes. always work that yeah. way. Yeah. So at times family and, and, and those close to us can be a trigger, even without their knowing. Again, yeah. I'm not saying they're doing it maliciously. Yeah. Then they're going on with their lives as normal. They are normal, but their normal is interfering with our normal. Right. So it, it's, it's a tricky balance, and that's why I'm oh saying you goodness. need to sit with someone. Yes. You need to sit with someone so that you chambua these things. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, um, wow. wow, there's so much to talk about, but unfortunately, we do have to wind up the show. And in winding up, I'd just like for you to again explain how people can get some help. If it's, yeah, please just explain that the stigma should not stop them. Stigma number one. There is always help out there if you talk. Always help. Yeah. There is always help out there if you talk. The problem is when you keep quiet to yourself. Yes. Uh, talk to a mental health practitioner. Talk to people who have gone through it. Talk to. Talk. Just talk. Yeah. That Just is talk. to the person who is going through this. Don't keep it. Don't keep quiet. No, to the to the parent and the caregivers. Mm. Listen. Learn to listen. Yeah. At times we assume an asumbua, he doesn't know what he wants. <laughs> he's just him, he's just yeah. being. But listen, if we listened more, we would be able to solve a bit more of the issues that surround us. So let's give our young ones a listening ear. Yeah. Okay. If you need 
uh, if you need help with therapists, mm. there, there are treatment centers, Google. What if someone wants to reach you personally? Do you have uh, social media? We do have a social media. We, we, you can always check uh, www.theretreatkenya.org. Uh, .co .ke. Okay. That is the Retreat Kenya. Uh, Facebook, it's at, uh, at the Retreat Rehab. Uh, same with Twitter. Phone number? No. No? Uh. Okay. <laughs> so social media, just the Retreat. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. So you have heard where you can go and get some help if you feel like you do. And also parents, if you're watching and you're picking up some signs in your child, you have heard of what you can do and where you can go and get that help. Again, this is not something we should be keeping quiet about. We are trying to open and educate our people about mental health so that we can give them a chance to live a normal, wonderful life, just as Edwin Burr is obviously doing. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Joy Mochacha. This has been Health on Monday.